Welcome to the Blue Society of Central Pennsylvania Thursday night uh, jam, our virtual jam, continuing tradition of 22 years of jamming. Uh, so tonight the uh, jam host will be Rocky, Gary Rothrock, and um, Mariana Schaefer will be the Facebook host. Uh, to start out with tonight, we're going to have a little blues talk and uh, We'll be talking with Black Betty of Moonshine Society. So, hi there. Hi. Um, and uh, the, she'll be talking with us about the uh, Moonshine Society band and uh, the, uh, the history of it and what they're up to today. Sure. Well, I appreciate you guys having us today. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to Sally over at NOLA Blue for, uh, for introducing us to the society. Mm -hmm. And we're coming to you live right now from Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., which is where we're based. And the band has been in the area here for just about 10 years now. Um, and prior to that, we were up in Boston because most of us met as we were college kids at Berkeley College of Music up in Boston. And just as students, we really enjoyed playing together. When we all graduated, we were kind of thinking, well, what's next? And we could have gone to New York, we could have gone to LA, we could have gone to Austin, a lot of great musicians do. But uh, the DC area has a very vibrant but underground blues scene here. And if you know it, you know it's amazing. I mean, the musicians here are top notch. The venues here have been incredible and it's a great art scene, but it's kind of an unspoken secret. Most people don't think of DC as a music spot. So I don't know, I don't wanna let the secret out too much, but that's why we decided to come here. And uh, the area has been very, very good to us. We feel very fortunate. And originally the group uh, was a mashup of two separate bands, Black Betty and the Bad Habits which was my original group, and another band called the Joe Poppin Band. And when we merged, we decided to just get rid of egos, get rid of names, and we became Moonshine Society. And there may have been alcohol involved in that decision, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but all the best names come from stuff like that. And um, we've put out two albums since we've been here. Uh, the first one was called Live in Shanghai because we really were performing in Shanghai, China. We had a three residency at Poplin Jazz out there and it was incredible. I would go back in a heartbeat. Uh, the folks there treated us so well and they loved the music and it was so cool to be on the other side of the globe doing this. And then uh, last summer we put out our second album which was mainly originals and that one's called Sweet Thing. We recorded it here in this area and uh, it has since gone on to win a Whammy Award for Best Blues Album. And then in January in Memphis, it won the Best Self-Produced uh, Album title at the International Blues Challenge. So very, very excited at how uh, well received it was, especially because all of the original songs were written by yours truly. Um, Kathy and I were talking a little bit earlier today and I was mentioning how when we were looking at the top five that were up for that award, there was only one album that had a woman involved, either as a front person, a songwriter, or a producer. So even being in the top five, I kind of felt like, you know, took a little win for the women, and then we actually won the overall title. So that was awesome. And thank you to the people who were, you know, a part of that and decided that they liked what we were doing. And since January, Obviously things are a little different than how we thought they would be, but we continue to stream regularly. Um, if you're watching obviously here on Facebook, uh, maybe you've been following us, uh, but we have a page here on Facebook where we are on at least every other week. And sometimes it's just a duo, sometimes it's studio, like what we're gonna show you guys tonight. But we just wanna stay connected to fans and keep meeting people and let them know that we're still kicking, we're still making music, and we're still here to bring some joy to everybody's lives while they're figuring out what their next steps are. So that's what we're up to. Sounds great. What um, what what kind of blues music um, do you, you guys do and what have been some of your influences? It's a great question. 
I like to think of us, uh, we're kind of positioning ourselves with the music that we write to potentially cross over between blues and Southern soul. That's the kind of music that I love the most. The stuff that's come out of Macon, Georgia, uh, the stuff that's come out of Muscle Shoals, the stuff that was coming out of the Delta blues region. Um, that's the style and the groove and the emotion that really touches me. If there's horns on it, you know, you got me. Hook, line, sinker. Um, and I prefer to write stuff that's very guitar heavy. You know, a lot of musicians, when you ask them, who are your musical heroes, they'll probably give you a long list of people that play what they play. You know, a lot of singers have singers that they admire. A lot of drummers have drummers that they admire. For me, I get starstruck when I see people like Robin Ford and Sonny Landreth and all these incredible blues guitarists. That, those are the people that inspire me, even though on stage I'm, I'm a vocalist. Um, but it's the, I think it's a very emotive instrument that can be raw and edgy, but also sweet and touching. And I want to write music that focuses and showcases instruments that can do that for you. Um, People that I've been listening to a lot lately. I love Tedeschi Trucks Band, always, always. I love Marcus King. I love what Samantha Fish is doing, this whole new generation of Southern Soul Blues that's coming through. Um, very exciting stuff. But at the end of the day, if I was stuck on a desert island, it's going to be Magic Sam. It's going to be Howlin' Wolf. It's going to be the Three Kings. It's going to be Ann Peebles. And until something new comes along that can top those, that's, that's going to be my forever list right there. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, do, do you have any uh, thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to uh, pass on to some of the uh, upcoming young people that are just getting introduced to blues? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, I consider myself sometimes to still be up and coming in this genre, but yeah. hit all the blues jams that you can. If you're here watching this, you're doing something right because you know that the jams are there to build communities. Mm -hmm. They're there for musicians to meet each other and network. Um, I have found that they are great audition places you don't even think about them like that but so many bands have formed because they saw people at these jams they got on stage it clicked and they're like hey maybe we should keep doing this and it's also a great way to meet venue owners and to get in front of them and show them what you can do so go to all the jams that you can uh, consume all the content that you can every album every band that you can possibly take a little bit of time to listen to even if you're not crazy about it it's all going to influence your writing and your ears later on. So I hope that helps a little bit. That's great. <laughs> we like that advice too, uh, because we, we, we certainly love our jam and I know you have a great jam in DC and uh, that can make such a difference. Uh, we, we love to have young people come to the jam and I love watching the more established musicians who have lots of experience and they take uh, these new young people kind of like under their wing. Totally. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's um, got to pass on the blues, you know, it's like uh, yeah. really good to see. It's live mentorship. I mean, it, it's amazing. And sometimes the people who are on tour who will pop by these jams, you know, it's, it's exciting to see folks who come by and then to have, you're right, the next generation be able to get on stage with those people. I mean, you, you can't pay to buy a ticket for something that those moments are just completely unplanned. And that's when it's really fun and really magical. Cool. Well, we're really looking forward to, um to hearing you all play at 8.15. And uh, thank you so much for spending this time with us and, and you know sharing your thoughts. My pleasure. Thanks for letting me talk at you guys. <laughs> <laughs>